Hello, everyone. Murdoch's here again with Mr. Thurm's review. How would you like to come on a holiday with me? You would? Fine, then off we go. Up with the curtain, and here we are at Whitby on England's east coast. The bus pulling in has brought two young people from Manchester. They're starting a walking holiday far from the factory line. A short walk from the bus stop, and Paul and Helen get their first glimpse of Whitby's ancient harbour, sheltering a colourful collection of small craft. On the harbour wall, the cobwebs of the stuffy city are blown away by the sea breeze from Kettleness Head. Whitby is one of the oldest seaports in Britain. Some people say that there's been a lighthouse here since the Phoenicians came to barter beads for Whitby jets. And below in the harbour, the fishing boats, the famous Yorkshire cobbles, have hardly changed since the Viking ships fished these waters more than a thousand years ago. Above the harbour, the parish church is old too, but the site is older still. Into this harbour sailed St. Julian, a French missionary. That was in 605. He and his followers must have climbed this bluff to set up one of the earliest Christian settlements in Saxon England. And nearby, the ruins of an ancient abbey still stand to mark the site of St. Julian's Mission. Much of the area around Whitby is now a national park. Paul and Helen are lucky that after a moorland walk, they can spend the night at the youth hostel at Boggle Hole. From here in the morning, they can continue their journey along the coast. The Youth Hostels Association, by providing an inexpensive night's lodging in an out-of-the-way place, has done much to help young people enjoy the beauties of our English countryside. To Paul and Helen, a little breathless from climbing the steep cliffs of Ravenscar, a friendly motorist's offer of a lift to York is even more welcome because they know that at York is another youth hostel, one of the best in the northeast. After seeing something of the ancient city of York, such as the strangely named Whitma Wapma Gate and the quaint old byways, Paul and Helen make their way as dusk falls to York's youth hostel. Here they sign in and pay the nominal charge for a night's lodging. Bed making is the next job. <laughs> Obviously leaves it for his mum to do at home. A permanent staff in a well-equipped gas kitchen provides a hot meal at a low cost. At these places, hostelers even have gas facilities to cook their own simple meal. After supper, there's usually some get-together with the other hostelers, many of them from overseas. And now let's leave Paul and Helen enjoying their youth hostel home from home and help another young couple look for a new home. The well-known scriptwriter Lee Vance and his wife screen and television star Eunice Gayson are thinking of buying a country house. It's not always easy to visualise what an empty house will look like when it's furnished, but the hallway certainly seems impressive. 
And the living room, with its big fireplace, could, Eunice thinks, be made very cosy with the right sort of decoration and furniture. I hope Eunice and Lee won't mind us looking in while they're choosing their new home. They're fairly used to being spied on. In fact, they were even married in front of the TV cameras. In America, that was. Lee thinks he's found some books, but there's a catch in it. And he seems to be left holding the baby. Strange what people leave behind, isn't it? Well, the ground floor of the house seems all right, but now Lee and Eunice want to know how the place is heated. I suppose the boiler is down here. Looks a little gloomy. And is that the boiler? Now, wait a minute, you two. Before you make up your minds too easily, have you ever heard of the building center? Well, the building center is in London. It's a permanent exhibition. Here you can get information about all sorts of household problems. On show there, you can see all the latest types of home equipment, different types of flooring all laid down. the latest kitchens, hand-painted doorknobs and finger plates, decorated tile. These can be used for fireplaces or, of course, for bathrooms. And as for boilers, well, look at these two fully automatic gas central heating units which heat the building centre itself. Tell you what, would you like to visit the building centre? You would go. Ah, there you are. Sorry if that was a bit sudden. That's all right. Now, it was Coke boilers, wasn't it? Yes, yes. You'll find them upstairs in the gas section. Up there? Yes, that's Thank right. Thank you. Thank you. Here you can find every type of water heater for every type of purpose. Careful, Lee, don't scold yourself. What do you miss found now? Ah, it's a gas refrigerator. She wants Lee to have a look at it. And if he's not careful, Lee will find himself buying more than a Coke boiler. Yes, oh. we should have one. Darling, I thought we came here to look at a Coke boiler. Yes, we did, but... Coke boiler. Oh. Come on. Ah, oh, that's a nice man-sized looking sort of job. Uh -huh. Oh, I say, that one's rather for me, don't you think? You'll take it, you mean? Mm, that one, I wouldn't mind. I suppose that's where the coat goes in. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's got a door. Yes, that's the thermostat. This is where the ash comes out. <laughs> that's where I like to see you on your knees. These two are going to be here for hours, so perhaps it's time we pulled the curtain on them. And that brings us to the end of another Mr. Thurm's review. Come and see us again sometime. Meanwhile, up with the music. Mm -hmm.